Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. In this video, we're going to show you the top five tips for diagnosing appliance problems. Malfunctioning appliances can really disrupt your daily life. Right when you need them, your oven stops working or your dishwasher spews suds everywhere. Appliances are complex machines full of a variety of components, large and small, that can go bad or simply gum up. It might be easy to assume that you've got a huge bill ahead of you, but if you know exactly what and where your problem is, you may find that it's incredibly easy and affordable to fix. Start with the basics. First, make sure your appliance is plugged in and the water or gas is on. Check the outlets themselves for signs of damage as well as the circuit breakers. If you've recently had appliance or maintenance work done, it could be a matter of someone accidentally forgetting to plug something back in or turn something back on. You can test your outlet by simply plugging something into it that you know works. Something small that can be operated handheld is easiest something like a hair dryer. If you plug it in, turn it on, and it works, that's great. If it doesn't, then you know something's wrong with the outlet itself. Unless you're an experienced electrician, you should have a professional look at any wiring issues. Hearing a strange noise coming from your appliance is usually a good indication that something's gone bad inside, but knowing what type of noise and where it's coming from can help you figure out exactly what your issue is. Listen to where the sound is coming from, front, back, high, or low, is the sound clunking, grinding, or squealing? A slipping belt or a failing motor won't sound the same. Sometimes the speed of the noise may help. For example, if a dryer support wheel or idler pulley is going bad, because they spin faster, the noise will be faster than, say, a dryer belt that's damaged and has a chunk missing out of it that's only making noise as it passes through the pulleys. So identifying the noise will make it easier to narrow down the problem. Also pay attention to when the noise is happening if you can tell whether or not it's happening during a certain cycle, that can help you figure out what component may have gone bad. For example, if your washer is only rumbling during a certain cycle, like the drain cycle, it could be that the drain pump is damaged. If you've just finished a repair job and you're still having the same problems, or have encountered a host of new ones, start by checking out your wiring. There are a lot of plugs, terminals, and ground wires to be aware of when you're replacing faulty parts. Double check to make sure all the wires and wiring harnesses are connected to the right terminals. Also be sure they're tight and pushed in all the way so you have a good connection. Even if you think you did it right, it's worth giving everything another look and checking it against pictures or wiring diagrams. Consult your appliances manual or check online for official wiring diagrams. And the next time you complete or repair yourself, remember to take a picture of wiring arrangements and complicated component assemblies before you disassemble them. This will give you an easy reference for how everything should look once you're putting it all back together again. Most modern microwaves, washers, dryers, ovens, and plenty of other appliances come with door switches that work as safety features. If an appliance thinks the door isn't closed, it often won't run at all. On the other hand, if the appliance thinks the door is closed, it'll run even though the door is open, which could be very unsafe. A faulty door switch can lock your appliance up by literally keeping the door stuck closed stopping it from running altogether, or making it unsafe to use. Luckily, replacement door switches are usually pretty cheap, and replacing them yourself is often an easy job, regardless of the appliance. Microwaves, for example, have two door switches. There's an upper and a lower switch installed in the assembly behind the control panel. If one of the switches has failed, it could also blow the fuse, meaning you'll have multiple parts to replace. If you're replacing one door switch on your microwave, always replace the other one too. On washing machines, there are generally two types of door switches. One is a basic switch that tells the washer if the door is open or closed, and the other has a door lock built into it. If the door switch has failed, the washer will think the door has been open and either won't run or will stop the cycle. For the other style, if the lock fails, it simply won't unlock. If you need to release the door lock in order to open the door, most front loaders have a manual release behind the access panel. If you have a different style, consult your user manual. If your dryer light doesn't come on when you open the door and the dryer keeps running, it could be that the contacts inside the door switch have fused together, making it think the door is still closed. If that's the case, it's important to fix it right away since it can be dangerous. The other, more common way it could fail is if the contacts inside have shorted out and the dryer won't run at all because the dryer thinks the door is open. All self-cleaning ovens have a door switch that tells the oven whether the door is open or closed. The self-cleaning function uses really high temperatures to clean the inside of the oven, and over time, this can cause parts such as the door switch to fail. If the door switch fails, you may get an error code saying the door is open and the self-cleaning cycle won't work. 
so make sure you follow the instructions in your manual about how and when to use the self-clean feature. Thanks for joining us for another troubleshooting video brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons now, and if you have any questions or want to share how your repair went, leave a comment down below.